Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. Going to be speaking with returning guest, Bruce Boyce. He's the author of the book, Cold Comfort, One Man's Struggle to Stop the Illegal Marketing of Powerful Opioid Drugs and Save Lives. He's returning here to Health Professional Radio to talk about the recent Purdue Pharma opioid settlement and a little bit about uh, what's going on at the CDC as well. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio. Bruce, thanks for uh, returning. Oh, thank you for having me, Neil. Give our listeners a bit of your background uh, for those who may not be familiar with you as a contributor when you were here before. Now, some may have uh, called you a whistleblower. Others call you a hero. Well, I, I don't think I'm a hero. I think I just did the right thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent 24 years in, in the pharmaceutical industry, and then I spent another 14 years with two different cases, uh, one with uh, Cephalon and the other with Teva for uh false claims, and off-label marketing. When you started talking about the lack of uh, caring in uh, making these millions and millions of dollars on opioids, what was the initial response? In terms of when I went to the company and said, mm-hmm. hey, look, this is, this is off-label. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we could kill some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they, they basically told me to um, mind my own business and do my job. You said that this uh, opioid crisis here in the United States isn't going away anytime soon. In fact, the, the recent pandemic uh, has contributed to the highest opioid overdose death rate. Um, also, there has been a Purdue Pharma opioid settlement. Let's talk about uh, both of these. It's an $8.3 billion uh, fine on Purdue for selling OxyContin off-label. <laughs> and also in the mail... Um, McKenzie, the marketing consulting company, was fined $573 million for turbo boosting their off-label sales of OxyContin. So they were advising uh, Purdue to sell off-label and promote uh, selling the OxyContin illegally. So, and they just were fined. They were just fined recently then everyone seems to be complicit in just not caring about people's lives at all. No, no. And, and, and the, the horrible thing about this is that, Neil, it, the CDC just came out with their 2020 uh, overdose uh, numbers and on, in opioids, and it is the highest it's ever been in U.S. history. Uh, it far exceeded the 2019 number of 71,000 plus, and it's over 81,000 for 2020 as opioid overdoses. And, and you know, Neil, th- this is just not the overdose population, but there's a collateral damage within the family when somebody is addicted and then obviously has problems with uh, keeping the job or keeping the family together or or having maybe the wife after the husband overdoses. So, mm-hmm. so it's just it's just it's a real drain of, you know. I think the CDC looks at almost five hundred billion dollars on the economy when when we're not paying attention to the opioid crisis. You said seventy one thousand twenty nineteen, eighty one thousand twenty twenty. Yes, the, is the lack of treatment the. Um, relapse rate, uh, the anxiety, the stress, what are some of these factors that that contributing so much to this in the last 12 months? There has been issues of depression mm-hmm. with the population based on, the, you know, the pandemic. And, you know, the factors are multiplicative within society, and it just lends itself to alcohol abuse, drug abuse, mm-hmm. and those kind of things with with people to try to cope and, you know, and, and not just as the opioid crisis that's continued, you know, I'm afraid that we're not paying attention to prevent a medicine for cardiovascular disease and also for oncology. You know, you can't take your eye off of any of these balls, can you? No, no. But the pandemic seems to be throwing the biggest monkey wrench ever into everything. I mean, people aren't seeking out care for yes. their addiction. They're not they're relapsing and not seeking out sponsors because of fear of transmission. They're not going to the doctor to maybe be discovered Correct. that they've got a, a problem for something else. So there are all sorts of Yeah, things. Neil, the, 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 
Yeah, they're not, they're not going. And I'm sorry to, I, I just jumped in. I'm getting excited about it, but you know they're not going to, um, you know, other multi-organizational therapies mm-hmm. to help addiction and family. And you know they're out there. It's just that they're afraid to go, and they, they're even afraid to go to the hospital. So they don't they don't go to a, uh, maybe a, a certified addiction center to get help because they're afraid to do so. So it, it really is a mess, isn't it? It, it sure is. Now, I'm not, I'm not a politician, nor am I a health care provider. But um, in the midst of this pandemic, with, um, you know, this, these billions of dollars in settlements, as states get this, these funds, as well as some of the relief funds due to the pandemic, where do you think these dollars should be earmarked as far as the opioid crisis is concerned, not just the pandemic? Well, the, the, the CDC is putting efforts and probably they're, they're putting more money a, a, as we get this uh, relief money uh, passed or whenever it gets passed. But, you know, for prevention of opioid overdoses and other opioid related, um, you know, harm that comes to the patients within communities like they they really are doing key strategies as far as uh monitoring uh emerging trends and 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 I and and it's a and I want to just take a moment to say something about that you know one of the things that are occurring right now is that you've got the opioid crisis and you got opioids you got fentanyl and you've got all that well now on the east coast there there an emerging trend of this is methamphetamines that are being produced synthetically uh, in China and in and, and, and Mexico. And they're mixing mes- methamphetamines like they did with fentanyl products. Mm-hmm. So that's an that's a emerging trend right now in what's going on and that uh, has hit uh, the East Coast states pretty hard. So, um, you know, that, those are some of the things that are occurring. And you, like I said, you just can't take your eye off those those balls in society, can you? No, no. A cold comfort. One man struggled to stop the illegal marketing of powerful opioid drugs and save lives. Talk a little bit about what your book covers. Let us know where we can get a copy of it. Uh, sure. If you go, if you go to uh, BruceBoyce.com, uh, you can go onto my website, and then you can wind up uh, clicking on the Amazon um, buy page, and it goes directly to Amazon Prime, and you can pick up the book that way. Um, and in and, and picking up the book and, and what it covers, it covers the inside scoop of what it's like to be a whistleblower and also to stand up for the folks that have been innocent in this opioid crisis. Well, Bruce Boyce, thank you so much for uh, coming back. It's um, always a pleasure and hoping we'll uh, speak again. Oh, certainly. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest Bruce Boyce, author of the book Cold Comfort, One Man's Struggle to Stop the Illegal Marketing of Powerful Opioid Drugs and Save Lives. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.